Rock Land. Today on Passport Kings, I'm going over the pros and a lot of the cons of growing up in New York City. Engage. I'm Rock Land. I travel the globe making videos and recommending destinations. Join me so we can discover, preview, and book your next vacation. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. Subscribe and enable notifications so you can see all the other videos you may like. So first, here are the pros of being born in New York City. The cool factor. Being from the five boroughs in New York is something to brag about. New Yorkers make history. There are about 12 really famous rappers who came from my block alone. But then there are also politicians and infamous legends who came from there as well. When someone asks me where I'm from, I am proud to say New York City, the Bronx to be exact. The bright lights and big city that people from other states saw on TV and wish they were there is actually my hometown. I wouldn't want it any other way. Number two, fond memories. I'm not sure about today, but when I was growing up in the hood in New York City, it was fun. Playing in the water from the fire hydrants, trading video games, having bean shooter wars, playing basketball in the blue courts, and talking to the girls are memories that will last me until my dying day. The summertime song by Fresh Prince describes the experience I had growing up in New York City superbly. We used to have cookouts, block parties, and actual celebrities used to just be hanging out with us. The house parties would not always turn out very peaceful, but they were always memorable. A neighborhood bully would mess with you every once in a while, but most times, they did nothing but help you get tougher and prepared for a world that's not gonna cuddle you when things don't go your way and people don't like you. Number three, stylish. There's a rumor going around that when Mace and Cam had beef on wax, that the only thing Mace said in his diss track that really hurt Cam's feelings was telling him that he was not that fly. I'm not sure if that's true, but being fly is very important to New Yorkers. Some people say it's a waste of money to always be going out buying clothing that will be out of style in a couple of months, but New York itself is a grand stage. Actually, the whole world is. In the business world, people will tell you to buy and iron your expensive, tailor-made suits to make a great first impression. New Yorkers feel the same way about all clothing. Dressing nice makes you feel great. When you feel great, you will be more confident. Confidence is one of the main keys to making great first impressions on the ladies and ultimately on business partners and your customers. Speaking of customers, that brings me to the next pro about native New Yorkers. We have to hustle. Although a lot of people are content with their regular nine to fives, most New Yorkers will always keep a side hustle. It's in our blood. We were taught at a very young age that working for a boss is unstable and jobs come and go. Places get shut down or we could just get fired or we might want to quit. Even calling another man our boss irks us. Instead of building that boss's legacy, we want to build our own legacies. We want our lifestyles to be lavish, even when we're living amongst people who aren't doing much better. And whether it's dabbling in being a part-time drug dealer, musician, freelance cab driver, or web designer, or photographer, or clothing entrepreneur, the city never stops and neither does the wills in the average New Yorker's brain about how to get this money. Even people with typical nine to fives always seem to make the most out of their positions by going above and beyond to drain the time clocks for everything they can spit out. Learning to hustle is an essential part of being a New Yorker, and I am ever grateful that that spirit burns in me to always be original, innovative, and 100% serious about my hustle. Number five is communities are like friends for life. When you hear about the hood in New York City, all you mostly hear about is the beef that a lot of people had with each other. And honestly, it is understandable for dudes to be getting on each other's nerves when literally living shoulder to shoulder and on top and below each other all day in a poverty situation. Constantly having other people in your face is frustrating. But what's not discussed in the mainstream is the fact that you are practically born with lifetime friends. Some kids are born at the same time, go to the same daycare, go to the same school, play basketball, get drunk or high for the first time with each other, made up rap groups with each other, chase women around for the first time with each other, get into beef, take care of beef, and get out of beef with each other, and many times go into business with each other. Crews of dudes from the same buildings and from buildings close by create bonds that will last them a lifetime. To this day, I chill with guys that I've known since I was in elementary school. These bonds can't be faked. 
when I see people who grew up in cities other than New York City, but never lived as close in proximity as many New Yorkers grew up with each other, they would chill out with each other, but rarely is it almost family like it is with us. With New Yorkers, the parents knew each other, you ate dinner at your friend's house all the time, and you hang out for hours just chilling outside their homie's building. Now that's most of the positives that I could think of about growing up in New York, but there are some downsides of growing up in New York, and here are just a few of them. This episode is brought to you by what used to be called travel hacking, but is correctly named award stacking. Save thousands of dollars on flights while rapidly improving your credit. Personally, this system has changed my travel life. Right now, the system is over 50% off. Click the link above and start traveling nonstop for so much less. Some people pretend to be super tough for no reason. A lot of times you just want to tell them, calm down, dude, jeez. Most times when dudes get older, they grow out of that tough contest that they were having with everyone. But a lot of them don't. Coonery. <laughs> I'm from the Bronx, and when a cop kills an innocent guy, a lot of people in New York start acting like we as a community need to reflect on ourselves instead of holding the very guilty but free cop accountable. Dudes in New York City will hold grudges for the rest of their lives against another black person, but are somehow forgiving to people who are from outside of the community, and that's even before they ask for forgiveness. After someone has violated one of us, that is not the time to start talking about black on black crime. And by this point, people should know that there is no certain term as black on black crime that's any different from crime in any other community. Cause crime exists in every neighborhood and chances are if someone's doing a criminal activity to you, they look like you no matter what race you are. Don't tell me that we should stop killing each other when I haven't killed anyone. Drug dealers may have killed each other, but that's part of that trade. Here's a con. Some people are fake religious. Nobody up there is in church, but they all are reciting church sayings while being the exact center they complain about. You hear all the religious cliches from the same person who would do you dirty. Another con is some people will compete with you to the point of ruining your friendship. Another con is there is a crime wave all day in poor neighborhoods, but no one will get on a train, go to where people actually have money and take it from them. And they're all over the place. Downtown Manhattan is filled with some of the richest people on this planet. Don't go around the hood harassing people if you need money so desperately. Go where the money is. Six, people in New York let some of the dirtiest, most vile, talking, and disrespectful to the community, Asians and Middle Easterners set up their little nasty stores on every corner and extract money out of the community every single day for decades. What kind of black people let Chinese restaurants sell them fried chicken? That's supposed to be our stereotype. So why do we let them sell it to us? Those stores that foreigners own should be burned to the ground if people in New York was as real as they always claim to be. I know for a fact that if some black person called himself opening a bodega in an Italian, Chinatown, or Hindu neighborhood out there, it would be closed down in a week because of vandalism and not one customer from those communities would support it. They'll never hire people from the community and they will never spend their money that they earn in the community on the community. But yet, New Yorkers buy crap, and I do mean crap, from them every single day. It's encouraging to see a lot of New Yorkers starting to wear their own clothing lines. I'll be happier when we start to eat our own food. Another con is, who are you competing with? I know I celebrated this trade a minute ago, but still, people in the poorest neighborhoods dress the flyers. If everyone is growing up in the same neighborhood, we are obviously all starting off in the same tax bracket. There's no need to financially compete with a person who lives next door to you. If you're not out making power moves or giving a first impression, there's really no need to be dressed in your Sunday's best. Another problem is traffic in every borough is nuts. The east side and west side highways are falling apart. People are honking at each other like as if three more seconds and the car is going to kill them. Everyone is double parked on the street and every car's bumper has accident damage. To make things even worse, the city makes you wake up bright and early in the morning and move your car from one side of the street to the other for street sweepers. And still to this day, my mom would stay out all night long just waiting for a parking spot to open up. Parking is outrageous in New York and I don't miss that at all. Another thing is the only jobs most people in New York City have is working in Dwayne Reed or something similar. Yet they pile up on a train like a can of sardines every morning to get there. Or they will have some type of delivery job or work for transit or corrections, or the hospital. And there's nothing wrong with those positions, those are really great to get. 
But my issue is, you'll mostly never see a black stockbroker, architect, or real estate agents when that's where all of the real money in New York is being made. And the bodegas. Everyone else is selling drugs or swiping or some sort of scam. And I know I also celebrated that trade a minute ago, but that is because when we get older, most of us go legit. Another problem is rent is ridiculous and a lot of people grow up to take over the home that their parents leave them when they die. Then there's the whack ass clubs. Every Friday you'll see the same people at the same clubs doing the same dances to the same songs for 20 plus years. Some people just get into their groove and they're stuck that way for too long. So, all in all, I still love New York, but from afar. When I go to visit on Thanksgiving, I'm very happy to see my people. I'm very happy to travel around New York and see faces that bring back excellent memories. But after a few days, I'm ready to go back home to Atlanta. When I look up at the Empire State Building, I know that those buildings are not for me. The entire city was created with different people in mind. And that can be said about Atlanta too. But at least I will own what's mine and not share it with neighbors who live uncomfortably close. So the question of today is what's your opinion about your hometown? Would you move back? Why did you leave it in the first place? Are you still living there? Answer those questions and if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Also visit me on Instagram. So yo, if you have a Yankee hat, wear that joint like it's a crown, like you're a king of passports.